<clears throat> excuse me. Whoa, well, let's start that again. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Rayleigh Bradshaw and I am a writer. Here on my channel, I typically do a lot of writing vlogs, just documenting my journey to becoming a published author. And almost a year ago now, I created a Scrivener for Dummies kind of video. Just going over the basics of Scrivener for anybody out there like me, who is a little bit technologically challenged. And ever since then, I've gotten lots and lots of requests to make more of those Scrivener for Beginner videos. So that's what this video is today. We're just going to do another little Scrivener for Beginners type video video. Just a quick disclaimer, I am not a Scrivener professional. All I did was I read through the entire Scrivener tutorial that comes on the Scrivener application and that is what I would highly recommend that you do if you are interested in utilizing Scrivener to its full potential. However, I know not everybody has two hours to sit down and read an entire tutorial and so these videos are just kind of to help you get a little head start to dip your toe in the waters if you are unsure about using Scrivener or if it feels a little bit intimidating to you. In my last video, we went over the basics of how to set up Scrivener. So I'm not gonna go over all of that now. I'm going to hop on my computer here real quick. You can see here on the side, this is my binder. So here I have my entire book under the working title of Untamable. So if I open this little arrow here, this is my entire book. I have it set up in parts. Um, my book is six parts long, which I'm hoping to condense to four parts, but just for the sake of my own personal organization of the story, I have it organized into six parts so I can go and open each part. And then I have the different chapters. Now you can, of course, make this even more detailed by adding scenes within the chapter. I have just kept it for the most part, just chapters. Um, some of my chapters do have scenes and that's usually where I've needed to shuffle scenes around a lot. It's easier to just break it down into a scene so I can be like, okay, this scene actually needs to go in chapter two and then I can move it. So I really like the versatility of Scrivener. It makes it really easy to move things around. Again, I went over all of that in my first Scrivener for Beginners video, so we're not gonna go into that in this one. In this video, I just wanted to go over how you can create character profiles. And so for the character profiles, again, we're gonna go into this binder. I'm gonna close this book part. And here you can see we have this tab called Characters. Um, and what I should have done is I should have put all of these within that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait for that little bar to appear like that. And that's how I know I'm dropping it into this category of characters. Right now, I'm not sure how these ended up being their own little folders. And I don't want that. I want them all under the folder of characters. So now that I've got all of my characters actually in the character folder, I've organized my character by the place that the characters are in. My book is what you would call a journey or a road trip type book because it takes place in several different locations and I have different characters depending on the location that my protagonist is in. So I've split the characters up into, well, horses because this is a Western. There's a lot of cowboys. The cowboys have their horses and I wanted to be able to keep track of what each horse looked like. So I'm gonna open this little horses tab here if I just click on horses, I can see all of my horses here with a brief description of them. I didn't go into huge descriptions of my horses. I just needed to, for the most part, remember which horse is which color um, and then kind of the basic temperament. So if I go into this horse, Midnight, this is a main horse in the book. She's a purebred black Arabian mare worth a lot of money. And then over here, I was able to drop a picture. So each of my horses, when I click on them, I've got a picture of what each one looks like, just kind of so that I know. Um, and then I also have that little basic character description. So I'm gonna show you guys how to drop a picture in there if you want pictures in your character profiles. So we're gonna go into, let's say, um, my cattle drive characters, and let's add a picture of Chuck. So I have actually not put anything in here for Chuck yet. Chuck is one of those characters who has been here from the beginning, from the first draft of this book that I wrote when I was 15. And so I know pretty well what Chuck looks like and all of that. But I'm just for the sake of this video going to add in here that um, Chuck, a Luli Apache man with long silver black hair. And actually there are a few things that I do need to add in here. 
especially after going over beta feedback, there were a lot of questions that some beta readers asked about Chuck that I realized I didn't really know the answer to that could really enrich his character, um, such as what was the name of his Apache tribe? I know especially for people who have Native American heritage, that's important to them to know, or at least it, it makes them curious, well, what is his Apache tribe? And that would help people to relate to him a little bit better. It would also help me be a little bit more accurate when he's explaining parts of his own backstory I feel like that's something that could really enrich his character for me to be more specific about which Apache tribe he was from. And so that's probably something that I'm going to add in here under his character profile. But for today, I'm not going to bore you guys with all the details of my characters, but so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little picture of Chuck in here. So to add a picture, you want to make sure that this is highlighted, this little notes tab. If you have any of these highlighted, I don't think you can add a picture in any of those. So you're going to be in this little notes tab. I'm just going to minimize this for a second and I have saved my own little character art of Chuck over here. So here on my desktop, I'm just going to grab Chuck and drag him over here. Boom. There's my Chuck. Okay. Is there no way to make that bigger? No. Oops. I think I just cleared that away. Come back, Chuck. Okay. So it looks like if you change this here, I see what I did there. Okay. See, I'm still learning how to do things. So if you do want this picture to be bigger and to not be just a tiny thumbnail on the side, what you can do is you can grab it and drop it right in there. So now I've got Chuck nice and big. Look how sweet and cute he is. Love Chuck. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing. Let's, uh, let's do Clancy. As you can see, I haven't really filled out a lot of these character profiles and I'm definitely going to be doing this before I jump back into revisions because I would think I was a little bit overly confident as I was writing this latest draft of the book that I knew all of my characters really well. However, since I've gotten beta feedback, a lot of beta readers had questions about characters that I realized I didn't know how to answer or they pointed out different inconsistencies with characters. And so as I'm going through the beta feedback, I'm going to kind of use that to help me make these final decisions about these characters and create their profiles. Um, but for today, you guys don't need to see me write about my characters. You can do this however you want. Um, if you have like a little character questionnaire that you like to use for your character profiles, you can just copy and paste that in here and then write in all of the answers. So I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to show you another example of putting a picture in here. So let's see, where's my, where my Clancy at? So I'm going to come over here, grab my Clancy, put him there. Clancy's my cocky guy. I'm going to put him in there so he's nice and big. And there's Clancy. Looking, look at that handsome devil. Okay. So anyways, um, that is how I organize my character profiles here in Scrivener. It's just handy because they're right there. And if I am working on, let's say I'm working on part five, chapter 31, I'm down here writing stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm, oh no, um, Clancy, I can't remember. Does Clancy have a mustache? And then I'll just hop on down here to my characters. He's on the cattle drive. So he is Clancy Kelly. Yep, he's got a mustache. And then I'll go back to part five chapter. What chapter was I on? Chapter, uh, part five, chapter 31. I'm not going to erase that. Don't need it. That was all I had to show you guys for today. I hope that was helpful in some way, just to give you guys um, some ideas of other ways that you can use Scrivener aside from just writing to organize your little character sketches. It's definitely been helpful for me with specific characters that I always have a hard time remembering things for. And then with other characters, I know it's going to be helpful for me as I go back to revise. I just need to get all those character sketches filled in a little bit more so I can be more consistent with my character descriptions, things like that. Anyways, if you found this video helpful, please comment below, um, like this video. If you have any requests of other things that you would like to learn how to do on Scrivener, please also comment that below. I decided I'm going to try to make a few more of these Scrivener for beginner videos because they are kind of fun for me to make and it kind of pushes me to learn how to do new things. And so even if I don't know how to do it and you want to learn how to do it on Scrivener, I can learn that for you and try to give you a really simple beginner's version of how to do it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if you utilize any of these little tips that I've shown you how to do, and I will see you next time. Bye. Rain, would you come take a walk with me across?
cross over the mountains and we'll reach the pale blue sea. I love you. I'm so glad you love me too. And I'll 